to and can you hit us with just a little squirt petroleum for the lips ready to blow i have always believed the road to excess leads to the palace of wisdom i gotta bend all the way over here please make your voice be heard I'm leaving society to move out to the country and smoke crystal meth with rednecks. Maybe you have a different opinion than us. Maybe we're completely wrong and you are the one lone person in the world that is right. That's why you're here tonight. Eventually, me and Dave Jarvis are going to Hollywood. But guess what? Some of us are actually pretty friendly. Yeah, but most of us are fine upstanding young man. Fine upstanding young man. <laughs> uh, smoke weed. <laughs> I am Rick E. Warden, and Ariel is not with us here tonight. So we got Hank Jarvis of Dank. What's up? Sitting in to ask some questions. And also our other host of Dank, guitar player, singer for Dank, and musical maestro for x610 chill our host tonight dave motherfucking jarvis no thank you thank you very uh it's not uh i'm not the host we're we we are a conglomeration we are a fungus that is slowly building and overtaking the butthole that is dfw Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. As as he was saying, Ariel is not here, so it will be bongs and dongs for two hours. I hope you're all ready for that. Very good. All right, so we are here tonight to promote the show this Friday at Ridgely. It's Ridgely, right? Yes. Yeah. Ridgely Lounge. Yep. Oh. All right. Cool. Well, uh, it's going to be a packed show. I think there's six bands. Uh, we got Dreadland, Dank, um, uh, fucking P Town. Uh, uh, who else is on there? Jerry Wayne, I think, right? Avery, I can't Avery remember. Chase is on it. I think. Pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, cool. So, so, so all the genres are uh, spoken for or well represented. So, uh, I know Dank and P Town go way back. Uh, tell us about when uh, Dank and P Town first got together. Oh, man, uh, I was actually trying to find a picture from that night because I have one somewhere. It's on one of my externals or something, but uh, it was. Is it Wits End? No, 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 this is out at uh, Hot Barbecue Saloon in Fort Worth. Oh, okay. I think it was at, uh, uh, wait, uh, yeah, it was uh, uh, Lone Star Country Club. Yeah, that's what they called, that's what they called it. Oh, after. But yeah. We, when we went there, it was Hot Licks. We like to call it Hot Dicks. Hot Licks? Oh, yeah, and Russell Holler did sound out there. From uh, In Search of Sight, he was the sound guy. Yeah, we're, uh, yeah, I've got a picture of me and uh, me and you, Hank, from that night, and we're both drunk as hell. No, uh, uh, yeah, I've got a picture somewhere. I tried to find it before we came on here, but I looked through my my photo albums. I looked on my computer. I couldn't freaking find it, but I know I have one. No, I I have it on a zip drive somewhere. Yeah, that was 2009, I think, maybe 2010. That was before I was in the band, for sure. <laughs> Long time ago. Yeah, it was nine or ten or some shit. Uh, uh, my I've, the guy who I Dylan, the guy who was in the band with me. His, his uh, hetero life mate uh, Billy was growing weed underneath the bridge over there, and like he would go and check on it every so often. That's how we got the gig because he needed to check on his weed plant. <laughs> right over there by the Miller plant. It was right across the highway from the Miller plant, way south, south Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. oh, no, no, this place was in Coppell. It's like a triangle. Yeah. Put up again. 
Wow. Yeah, the, the well, place already, over in uh, like over like in Fort Worth that you're talking about across the street from the Miller Bar. I think that was like Rockstar, and then it was like Legends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sounds right. It, it, oh man, yeah, that was yeah. A long time. many a, many a drug deal has uh, gone down over there. Uh, what's cool? Uh, that venue, uh, the Rockstar or whatever. Uh, I went to go see PRI there, and unfortunately. I had just taken a heavy dose of mushrooms, and they were just starting to kick in when they said, "Hey, come out to a metal show." And my dumb and my dumbass was like, "Ooh, that sounds like fun." And so I get in there, and I'm starting to feel it. Things are are looking awry. I, I feel like fucking Clooney in Dust Till Dawn. Like shit's not adding up. And then the first band, they don't even play. They just start doing the sound check. And they're all grisly, rat-looking motherfuckers that are playing some like real fucking heavy metal. And as soon as they bust out into their <laughs> shit, like they turned into like the most evil fucking gigantic bats that just scared yeah. the fuck out of me. And I went and hid in the PRI van and just stayed there for the entire night, just farting mushrooms. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Well, that's all right. So that being said, <laughs> that being said, uh, I just wanted everybody to know, uh, Pete Town Skanks, uh, definitely after seeing thousands and thousands of bands in DFW, Pete Town is easily in my top five favorite bands because oh, I have seen you. them. I, 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 I have seen them over the course of like the past 10 years and they are fucking incredible every time I see them. It's true. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad y'all appreciate the value of a good live show because y'all really put one on. Well, we try. We yeah. uh, we want to look interesting and we want people to want to look at us. You know, can't stand up there and you know can't stand up there and do nothing. You know. Yeah, we try to Speaking have fun. Interesting you looking. Know? Dreadland, y'all look fantastic as well. <laughs> Dreadland puts on a hell of a uh, life show. Dreadland, I just came across you. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah, man. I just came across uh, y'all's video, and uh, man, y'all fucking whale. Y'all are fucking badass. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think I've seen Dreadland play like three, four, five times already. Y'all fucking kick ass. Y'all put on a y'all put on a badass live show. What's a piece? Hey. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Hey, I'm just there to see the sundress, you know. That's 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 all I want to know. That's why anybody comes. <laughs> Rocking this show, man. <laughs> Don't be clean. Yeah. Oh, Take one look at him cab get hooked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're in my box. <laughs> So uh, th this show was organized by the folks at Max Hill. Yet Max Hill is not going to be playing. Are they growing uh, drugs underneath the venue as well? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Want to get in on that? <laughs> drugs <laughs> under the venue. Stockpiled. Doesn't yeah, sound yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 So, what have uh, the Skanks and Dreadland been up to these days? Uh, la last time I saw the Skanks, it was over at Growl Records, where, once again, even with no stage, y'all still blew everybody away. So, uh, what, what have y'all been up to, Skanks? Oh, we've been recording. We got uh, we got three songs in the works, uh, you know, that we're getting ready to release. And, uh, you know, after that, uh, we're probably going to go back into the studio you know, and record some more. You know, our goal is just to you know, get some, get some Hello? good releases this year. Oh, yeah. Hello? Don? It's Chief <laughs> and Chong just joined the show. <laughs> oh, just got here from another universe. <laughs> Welcome to the party, pal. That's Don, our drummer. What's up, Don? I think he did that on purpose. <laughs> He's acting like thing. he wasn't yeah, he was connected. Some, uh, he was having some yeah. mic trouble. <laughs> he thinks he has the okay. power. Fun and rocks is what we're all about. <laughs> There's no <laughs> power in this. <laughs> Only glory. Oh. So, how many uh, how many albums has uh, Pete Town released since its inception? 
Uh, one full length that was with our old lineup. Um, got a long time ago. That was memories from a subconscious mind. It's on. It's on uh, Bandcamp and on the tubes and everything. And with this lineup, we've released the EP a couple of years ago. I think it was shit three or four years ago at this point. So yeah, we gotta get on the. We gotta get on it and release more stuff. You know. Oh yeah. oh yeah, YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excuse my friend. Fuck yeah. She insists. Uh, insist Dr- Dreadland. Me, what, man. Dreadland. What have y'all been up to, man? Oh, recording a uh, few shows lately. We're mostly mostly at the Haltum, but um, we have um, two basically albums that were. We just need to get vocals on right now, um, and we released a song uh, last night on YouTube. It's just uh, the first song on the recent album that we put out, but we're redoing all the vocals with Charles. Um, so we have one of those out so far, and yeah, we're just trying to get two albums done now. Okay, a third in the works. Yeah. <laughs> and, and hopefully many more. Charles. Yes. Char- Charles is a cool name. No- nobody's named Charles anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh it's my dad's my dad's name and dad's dad's name. Big line of Charles's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> junior Junior. <laughs> junior. Junior's Junior's Junior. Junior, junior. <laughs> You're one of those middle names like Festus. Yeah. Oh, it was like a first name. <laughs> T J A J R J backslash and sport the fish. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So one thing that we like to do around here is we like to find out the humble origins. Where where did you guys come up with your sound? So P Town, I'm gonna label, I'm gonna lob that to you. Where did P Town get the sound? Uh, it goes way back. Um, we were when I, I was still young. I uh, was listening to a lot of psychobilly music, and uh, I was real into uh, Zombie Go Train, Coffin Cats, uh, stuff like that, and. We were trying to do, uh, we were trying to do like power metal. We tried to do black metal, and the guys I was working with just never got anything done. So I said, let's just do like some rockabilly, psychabilly stuff. It's not, you know, crazy difficult. So I wrote a couple of songs, got my bass player uh, Vincent on board, and our drummer at the time uh, Ralph, and. Uh, our old guitar player Willie and we just threw it all together and started writing songs and that's I mean that's it that it was just uh you know like it was just hey let's do this I'm tired of I tired I'm tired of fucking around these other guys that we're trying to do stuff with can't get shit done so let's yeah. actually do let's actually do something and that's where you, it started you know what's funny is that when they started that band <clears throat> I started suffer the human condition and uh we were uh, practicing at this uh, practice studio in Irving and uh, we were going outside, you know, to take a smoke break. And I heard these guys playing and I was like, holy shit, I've never heard music like that before. It was it was different. It was so weird. Uh, I walked in there and they were just every, everyone was super cool. And I, I got to know them. And man, I would go to all their shows. I was like one of their biggest fans. Um, and then, you know, I joined up with them in, I think, 2013, 2014, somewhere around there. They, they were having issues with band members and, uh, and they were like, hey, uh, you know, you want to try out? And I was like, hell yeah, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Now he's been he's been with us longer than the original guitar player had been with us. It's, it's been that long. Yeah. Oh. Big fans and suffer the human condition, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we work hard. Oh, yeah. You can tell. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to be uh, presumptuous or anything, but I must say there's definitely a very Mike Patton uh, essence to the vocals and definitely to the live show. 
uh, or at the very least, like some mindless self-indulgence. Uh, am I correct uh, within the ballpark? With, that with, for, uh, with, with us? <laughs> yeah. Well, some both of y'all, y'all sure. <laughs> No, I'm 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 a I'm not a big fan of mindless self indulgence, but I did wait in line outside of the Galaxy Club to be turned away because the club was full. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make you a bigger fan. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah, and uh, Dreadland, y'all definitely come from a much different uh, background. Uh, t- t- Tell us about your humble upbringings. Well, oh. not too different in a sense because me and uh, and this guy here, we had already been playing music for a number of years. Yes. Way back in like 2012. That's when we first started the band. Yeah. Uh, just us. He was doing drums and we were trying to do thrash <laughs> metal initially, uh, but we could never find anybody to do it. And so he just started playing drums and we were just like, we just want to play live again. So yeah. we just... We're like, let's just focus on something different. Let's do heavy blues. That was the initial idea. And then um, as we kind of went along and found different members and swapped out, uh, you know, started experimenting with, you know, psychedelics, we wanted to get more, <laughs> more yeah. for a while. We're trying to be like Hit the tool Pantera yeah, mix. Yeah, we're trying know. to mix tool Pantera. And then eventually I started really getting into bands like Meshuga. And I've already been into lots of Tesseract. Bands. Yeah, Tesseract, uh, for me, like, the stuff I'm based in mostly is death metal, like Cannibal Corpse, Suffocation, Nile, that, you know, that heavy, kind of old school, new school death metal stuff. And then, uh, eventually, somewhere in 2016, we found this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Dumbest story ever. Yeah. I was, friends, I was friends with Cody because uh, in, like, 2013, uh, my band, old band, uh, played a battle of the bands with him. And uh, me and him were Facebook friends after that. And one day, uh, I had just, because I broke my hand too, so I'd been out of drumming for a while, and I was trying out for bands at the time. And then all of a sudden, on Facebook, he posted, who played drum? <laughs> and then I was like, I play drum. And then, yep. Came over, fucking already knew two songs, and we're like, yeah, this is the guy. <laughs> apparently, I was the first guy that actually learned the shit to try out. Yep. Um, and I have a classically trained background, so I'm just like, that. that's a given. Like, you should know what you're trying out for. Yep. So, yeah. It just, it just, just went from out. there, man. <laughs> and we all got long hair. Fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Charles, you got some growing to do, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm trying. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> it's once he gets past that stage, you're, you're all right. Oh, yeah, then we, we went yeah. about, <laughs> six years without yeah. any vocals. Yep. We got to the point where Cody was just recording the vocals and we were having him play over the PA when we were at <laughs> shows and stuff. And we had like a little mannequin head. Yeah, called, Bianca. Called the, yeah Bianca. <laughs> And um, then last year, what was it like? It was early last mid, year. Like summertime, I last think. Last year in May. It was last year. Yeah. We met, we got in contact with Charles through, uh, I think, what was it like Band Mix? Or band something? Mix, yeah. 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 Wow. wow. Band Mix. We had people on there and, and actually the, did. Literally the first time we had logged into that <laughs> since like 2017, we like forgot that we even had it. And then yep. it I was just like, happened this year and he posted, we're like, yeah. Hey, Somebody wants to be a vocalist for us. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> he wore a mask too, so it just kind of you yeah. know worked out. Yeah. I, uh, so I've a, a, I came out into like the scene here doing uh, this thing, this solo project called The Killer's Vision. Beautiful. And it was just me. And, yeah, it was just me and a mask <laughs> and a bunch of other mannequin pieces, kind of just like destroying shit over some music tracks that me and a bunch of other friends of mine have made. Uh, so it, it just kind of worked out really, really, really well. It's like, uh, you know, I was going through a bunch of different bands, kind of do good same thing with uh, with Homeboy, man. It's like meeting up with people who fucking just couldn't do it, couldn't keep up with it. You know, their personal lives were interfering with everything. So it was like, finally, here's a group of dudes who, <laughs> who like, get the shit done. So... <laughs> Fucking worked out. Hey, Don, what is your opinion on taking psychedelics and listening to music that rattles your sphincter? 
for that. Got it. Oh, but psychedelics. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Uh, basically, here's all I can say, uh, and I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit on it, and that is um, uh, if you take a lot of acid, uh, really good <laughs> acid, and then uh, I would recommend listening to Meshuggah's album Catch 33. Uh, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> like a new Millennium Cyanide Christ. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> it was, yeah, somewhere around 2015, I remember me and him, we were group tripping real hard, uh, and I just listened to that whole thing in headphones, and, like, eventually, after the album was over, it looked like, I guess I was just peeking, because the walls started, like, melting and shit. <laughs> it looked like everything was, like, ripply, like, ripply wet paint and all that, and, uh, <laughs> for the music, it's like, it's, I, just, I feel more of a connection when I'm there, like, in that mental space, where I just kind of zone out, just, you know. Takes me to it. Takes me to a weird. Yeah. Place, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> I'd rather I'd rather do shrooms because acid. It's like shrooms holds your hand and helps you through. <laughs> Acid's just like fuck Get it out there. there. <laughs> no till. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's, been years, it's been been some years since I've tripped like or anything. I don't I don't really get into it anymore. It's like. There's a certain point where you just kind of start to experience like the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have any new self growth to do. So at that yeah. point, like I know what I need to do now. I just I need to. You know, but it was a fuel. It definitely was a fuel. I'd say. Yeah, I I don't think I'd be doing what I'm doing without that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can hear it in the music. You guys are freaking awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> and I had the advantage of. Uh, yeah, I know social life to just practice guitar i think that helps <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah it's better when you have less yeah. <laughs> maybe it didn't help my psyche but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that and that's the other thing yeah. and we are not yeah we are not internet people oh god <laughs> we're not. Not <laughs> yeah about, about what are your thought, thoughts on taking psychedelics stuff? and going on stage and playing Oh, I would love to do Shrooms that. Shrooms would be fun. Acid, I could. I, but I, I actually have never done that. I, I rarely do that. I mean, I feel like I could do it, but I would probably get too into whatever I'm doing. And when that happens, oh, like, cool. I have to like. Shrooms, I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Um, on acid, I think I'd be all right. On acid, acid oh, all. Yeah, I would yeah. see my reflection in my drum head. And I would just I've done it. Out. I've done it with uh, another group. Us three have played in uh, Vitamin. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. oh man, it's woo, it's weird. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do it because I wouldn't be able to set up gear. <laughs> yeah, the trick the trick is to set your gear up before you, you hit, you drop. All right. Yeah. My God, we used to have like a fifth, like eighteen pedals, and the way I had to wire up all everything up before yeah, set. You're just standing over. I like, just stood over my my shit, and I'm like, I don't even know what to do. Like I know what to do, but I don't know what to do. So I'm like, nope, we're just going straight in the amp. Fuck the effects. <laughs> <Nobody> <laughs> make the effects. There you go. <laughs> hey Hank, I know you're an expert on taking drugs and getting on stage. Uh, can you tell us some uh, psychedelic experience that you've ever had in front of a live audience? Uh, yeah. I mean, I've had a few. I would say, like, the worst one was with you, David. <laughs> Me? Yeah. Uh, well, wait, that, this one day, I, I, I don't know what year it was, man, but 2005 or six. Anyway, my buddy gave me a uh, bunch of uh, so we ate a bunch of chocolate mushroom bar, and uh, an hour later, an hour later, it wasn't working, and so we were like, "All right, well, it's some bonk ass shit." So then someone else gave us some like uh, ecstasy pills, and we're like, "All right, well, let's take those." Well, that's a fun combo. Yeah, <laughs> and those those were bonk too, man. And uh, for like an hour, like so, like three hours had gone by, and we had uh, driven to our gig, which was at the Red Blood Club in Deep Elm. So we were hanging out on the little rooftop thingy, 
and uh, the shit had not kicked in. I'm talking three hours had gone by. And then all of a sudden, you know, I had, I, I took one sip of a beer and then sang like, uh, <laughs> You remember like a Batman, like that. It was like that, but it was like a Tom Cruise's face. I don't know why, man, but it was just Tom Cruise, like, <laughs> like that. I go, oh, and then I, uh, my eyes, my eyes opened up. I thought I was in heaven because like all my friends were around me, like circling around me. What the fuck am I? Uh, apparently, like I just like passed out. I fell down or some shit, and uh, all the bands were like, "Oh, what a fucking pussy bitch!" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, and then Rick Nagler, m- my drummer at the time, he goes, his head pops in, and he's like, "What? Hey, you motherfucker!" <laughs> I'm like, "God." <laughs> It's like, man, you're fucking our show up. That must have been terrifying because half of his face is forehead. Yes, yeah, it's, it's huge. You <laughs> uh, So, like, anyway, uh, and then like, yeah, uh, everyone helped me up, and then and then we went on stage, and then they blasted fucking like strobe lights and shit in my face. But at that point, it was like just fun. But at that one point, I was in some kind of Tom Cruise purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> to see him running away from his gay thoughts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, anyway, it was it was the last time that I you know took uh, mescaline for going on stage. It's not. Drugs are bad. Okay. All right. I mean, All right. Can anybody on this panel top that story? No. Well, I remember uh, when I was in grain and, uh, you know, me and Hank, we were in grain. And we, we took a lot of drugs over the years, but I remember this one time I took some ecstasy right before we got on stage. And it was like a Friday the 13th in February. And like it kicked in as I'm screaming and as we're rocking. And uh, like the whole audience just kind of became this one like mosaic blur. And uh, I, I guess I finished the show properly, but then uh, I walked outside and it was all snowing. And uh, I don't know if you've ever taken ecstasy, but everything is wonderful. So when everything is wonderful and you walk outside and it's snowing, uh, there's no tension there. <laughs> it's like I walk outside and I'm like, what the fuck am I screaming about, man? Everything is awesome. <laughs> Everything is beautiful. Yeah, that just sounds like a good time. Oh yeah. I didn't know y'all were ingrained. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a lifetime or two ago, but yes, that that was us. And okay, great. I went to a party <laughs> one time in Arlington, and some dudes from Grain were there. Uh, <laughs> dude's house over there, off of like uh, Division, right when you get into Fort Worth, almost. Yeah, it's this old hippie dude's house, and uh, I was talking to some dude there. He was a, uh, I think he played guitar with in, in Grain. I don't remember his name. This is about two thousand five or six, maybe. It was Nick. That sounds right. And I must say, if he treated you cruelly, I do apologize. We've all changed. We're better people now. No, he was he was cool. Uh, he he uh, we listened to some of the music. Yeah, that's great. Small world, man. Jeez. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the DFW metal scene is very incestuous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, mm-hmm. uh, so uh, do we know any of the other bands that are playing <laughs> this Friday? Like, do we know them personally? Have we been to their house? Have we uh, given them some Rob Van Dam uh, expertise? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure Avery, Avery Jade's going to be there. They're a pretty decent band, too. I can't remember. I don't, I don't know. Played a few times. 
the, any of the bands we're playing with. Avery, we're Avery Jade we played one time with. Yeah. yeah. Like that, Tom Taylor. Like at uh, at Reno's, I believe we played with them. So. Oh, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, we tried to hung out with that bar a lot. Yeah. 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 Granted, a lot of these shows I'm like pretty wasted at, so I kind of like forget <laughs> who we played. <laughs> so. We had like six Mexican candies. Oh, there. God. Yeah, holy Ooh. shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a drink, that's a drink and an animal meal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> y'all have never tried them. Give them a shot. They're like the fucking sweetest things you'll ever drink. <laughs> we got Al Jolson over here. Al Jolson. <laughs> I know uh, Dreadland likes to play with a little like-minded uh, bands, but I know there are very few like-minded bands of P Town. Uh, is it is it rough playing with bands that sound nothing like you? I think it's fun. Uh, I quite enjoy playing uh, uh, off-genre shows, especially when we're like the only metal band on the bill. Uh, to me, it's just, it's like you kind of appeal to a crowd who may not necessarily listen to metal or have gone to a metal show or even listen to Dreadland. So <laughs> it's it's cool and a good chance to get like gain new fans and even like turn people on to metal and stuff. I've been told several times with people they they hate metal, they hate listening to it, but they like us. So <laughs> yes. yeah. I've had country old country boys say, you know, I never listened to metal before. I've never been All the time. to it. That dreadland, that dread <laughs> guys remind me of Slipknot. Yeah. <laughs> Out. <laughs> we have, we oh, have. Yeah. We have. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird for us sometimes, uh, for P Town Skanks, because uh, <clears throat> when they put us with other rockabilly bands, we're, we're like too heavy for the show, so we got to play a lighter set. Um, we like playing with punk bands, and we like playing with, uh, you know, sometimes metal bands. You know, we. We played several shows with Dank, obviously. We love playing with those guys. Those guys put on a hell of a show. Fuck yeah. Man. So, I um, believe yeah, I, I'm, you know, like, 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 like Charles said, you know, it's just, uh, it's cool to play, you know, just other, other genres, you know, with other bands. And then, you know, you get people who listen to you who never would have listened to you. And they're like, wow, you know, I really like this mix of music. You guys sound like almost metal, but not, but old style but not you know they don't know how to how to like label us so it, it's fun right so it's honestly the best feeling here if hearing that from people <laughs> especially when they're like i don't typically typically listen to this type of music yes. but i'll listen to you guys <laughs> yeah our biggest our, one of our biggest fans is a dude named tony he's a death metal guy and he comes to you know, a bunch of our shows and he's like, you know, I don't like, I don't like that kind of music, but he's like, you guys are different, and that, you know, that's cool. Cause you know, we're all metal guys, right? <laughs> we, so you can you can hear some of that influence. We'll throw some blast beats in every once in a while, or some, you know, some double bass and stuff like that. Some and oh. you know, Dan is in a, a death metal band, so we've got that yeah. influence as well. It, it's it's it's, it. uh, it's cool to hear. Yeah, you guys do a great Misfits cover, by the way. Oh, thank you. Man. We, we yeah. love the Misfits. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> you guys did great. I was, like, singing my ass off as loud as I could. I, I believe it was that growl when I seen it, too. I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> no, I think you're really mistaken good. because uh, we wrote that song in the parking lot before that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would y'all rather play with a bunch of bands that are heavier than you or lighter than you? I uh, mean, like, it just I depends on the night. Really. It's 50 50, man. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just yeah. looking to hear something different, you know? I just want the bands to be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. They're, just good. They're just as good as us or better, you know? That's that's always refreshing. You know? I, always, I would love seeing, getting an opportunity to see good bands. Basically for free, you know, playing in the band at the same time. So, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For the most part, man, yeah, we play, we play with so many different kinds of bands. They've all been 
Yeah. We did one pay to play show where a, where a chick was doing like slam poetry. Yeah, that was a weird one. I, I think uh, <laughs> that one, I thought we were a reggae Jeannie band. Beth? Jeannie Beth? Yeah. Because of, because yeah. of our name, Dreadland, a lot of people think we're a reggae band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, for our fans out there that are listening, um, whether y'all are in a metal band or a, uh, you know, uh, uh, a uh, surf rock band or a punk band or a country band. Uh, tell the people at home what venues and what promoters have been the kindest to you and, and your style of music. Halt them. Oh, shit. Halt Chaz. Chaz oh, is fucking awesome. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Very yeah. accommodating. I mean, it's Halt. Just, that we, venue is just so fun. We played decent ones at the Ridgely, Food's too. Good too. <laughs> <laughs> And Blizzies, man. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah, and we and we've dealt with uh, Brian from Torch Entertainment a lot. Uh, I've dealt with him yeah. with all, all my bands, and he's he's always done me really fair. He's always, he's a really good guy. So, same. Brian is is pretty awesome. Shout out to Brian, by the way, if yeah, you're shout listening. Out to Brian. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I believe you're talking about Brian Idell Idell. Yeah, yeah. I D E E L L. Yeah. Yeah, he's the one that goes. Yeah, Torch, Torch Entertainment. Yeah, he yeah. was, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. We've we've done a number of, of the Torch Fest shows. And did he also who who set us up with, with Doyle? Otep and Doyle. Yeah. Ooh, uh I can't remember the sadly the promotion off the top of my head though. <laughs> sadly. I thought it was Brian because he Here's got the flyer. No, it wasn't Brian. Okay. Yeah, there's a flyer for it. Fucking- no, this this is the how we got the Doyle show is through a company, uh, promotion company that's based out of Oklahoma. Okay. Yes. okay. So that's, that's how we yeah that's how I got through them and like <laughs> we, were, uh, we were we uh, were we were gonna be on a show with uh, with Black Flag <laughs> with like whatever was left of original members and their vocalist was like nope no fucking locals so we <laughs> we were on that show and then we got kicked off the show <laughs> damn we didn't make it the exact <laughs> antithesis of what black flag stands for you're right <laughs> it was it was fucked so i think they brought on like a couple other like rando bands you know that they probably know and like but yeah they, it was like strictly no locals no local bands Wow, that's lame. Uh, uh, P- yeah. P-Town, what what venues and promoters have been good to y'all, man? Dude, Haltum Theater. You know, like I said, they're also like like they're, they're they're that place has always been awesome. Uh, we miss Wits End. Yeah. Wits End yeah. was one of our favorite places in in Deep Ellum. Yeah, it's Fort Worth and Haltum Theater are like oh. really good for metal. Rail Club too. Dude, one of the best. One We're of the best lineups I ever saw was y'all and Apes Gone Bat. Like y'all back to back. That was a fantastic show right there. <laughs> yeah, that was at that was at Wits End, wasn't it? It was. And we played with them again. I think at the basement place at, at J and J's Pizza in Denton. The Apes Gone Bats fellas, but. Uh, we always like to go to Three Links. Uh, Scott begs. Uh, he's always real receptive to having us there. And uh, uh, Clint over at Trees. He's uh, he's usually pretty good about getting back with me when I when I message him or whatever. And yeah, uh, we used to go to we used to go to the boiler room all the time uh, with uh, um, God. What's the What's the guy's name that owned Boiler Room? Boiler Room was kick ass for a little while. CJ? Yeah. Now, the, the, the bass player from uh, Drowning Pool, what's his freaking name? CJ. CJ? No, it wasn't CJ. Uh, Mike? No, it was. Uh, shit, you're going to make me check my email. No, but anyway, he, no, yeah, he but- always. He well, was he was cool and he'd have us out and we liked going to the boiler room. We played with a lot of a lot of cool bands there and uh, when they shut down that kind of sucked because that was kind of our go to place for a long time. 
well, shit, y'all deserve mad props because you are the first band, as far as I know, to be on Blow Your Brains Out that has been successful in Denton, Dallas, and Fort Worth. Uh, most bands can't uh, can't claim that. I wouldn't say we're successful, but but we've, we've been out there. <laughs> Well, okay, okay. Well, they let you back into the county lines. <laughs> and we used to go out to Shreveport a lot. The Tiki Bar out in Shreveport—they treated us real good. Uh, Dan, you—you you, uh, before it was right on the cusp of when you joined the group. Uh, yeah, you, can't, yep. you came out there with yep. us and roadied for yeah. us. I, I know I got to play one with y'all out there as well, though. That's right. That's right. After that, but uh, Kane and Mary out at uh, Tiki Bar, it was free beer all night, and uh, <laughs> there was a really awesome barbecue truck that would park out front called Rolling Smoke. And man, we always had a good time out in Shreveport. That was great. That was great. I miss I miss those times a lot. And you didn't get robbed or raped or anything. Uh, yeah, we got raped, but we didn't mind. So. <laughs> it was Classic. consensual. Just, just a quick, easy break. A willing sperm recipient. We always appreciate those. Right here. Uh, so, uh, how about uh, Dank? Uh, what promoters and what venues have been kind to Dank? Dank? Who, me? Um, I would say, I don't know, man. I'm the drunk one. Uh, I like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Diamond Gems is like a freak show every time. I, I enjoy that shit. Yeah. Uh, dude, like, actually, now that I think about it, every place that we normally play is like uh, closed. Like Pepper Mall fucking closed. Uh, yeah. Uh, what, uh, Mavericks is closed. Or like Mavericks is like I don't know, some kind of like Jesus Freak Haven or some shit like that. Like everything is, I don't know, man. I don't know. What's a good place to play? Is that where you did sound? Yeah. Uh, we well, came out the ring. Did sound for like what? I didn't hear. I said, hopefully the Ridgely Room. Y'all are playing there this Saturday, right? This Friday. This Friday. Oh, so so loud. Hopefully the Ridgely Room will be a good place to play. Oh. Right, yeah, but like it's not in Arlington. We're playing at the lounge, so. <laughs> lounge, yeah, it's probably. Cool. Is the lounge is the small one. Um, last time we had a show there, we were put on the lounge, but the they saw we were too big, so they <laughs> added us to the show in the room. Um, yeah, I don't know. We have so much gear; it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we'll see, man. This whole fucking show has been uh, intellectually disabled. <laughs> that was very that was very PC of you, and we would appreciate if you didn't do that again. <laughs> retarded. The show is retarded. <laughs> Christ! I mean, uh, what's the uh, PC way to say yes. Jesus? Jesus? Mohammed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't Jesus. Say. Jesus PC Christ. The beard, the beardy guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking Aaron. <laughs> where, where, wherever, wherever they're bombing this week. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I don't know. Uh, what was the question? Uh, uh, playing at uh, Ridgely Theater. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> no, I was looking Ridgely around Lounge, for a flyer for that show. Oh, yeah. Ridgely Lounge. Whatever. Yeah, Ridgely Lounge I found the Ridgely event. Theater, that's a false advertisement. No. Okay, I found the no. uh, yeah, event page, but not the flyer. I, I've seen flyers. I know they exist. It's somewhere. Yeah, we're uh, playing somewhere. I, I, Hank, I, I'm pretty sure Hank posted it on his Facebook like earlier today. Perfect. But I think it's a uh, twelve dollars at the door, uh, which is a weird number. 
I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> Twelve dollars at the door. What? What the fuck? You're right. Just make, make yeah, it fifteen or ten. Fuck. <laughs> With whatever tax uh, there. by the way if you if you have merch to sell uh get there early because those booths over on the side they fill up real quick yes okay Speaking there, of which, we there we go we there we go yeah, yeah for sure we will have so merch. screenshot screenshot that qr code and you will get a picture yeah. of somebody's dick <laughs> we'll have t-shirts a random dick every time <laughs> Go see. all right so the bands that have not really been mentioned uh, okay avery jade uh jerry wayne and the unqualified does anybody know about them are they qualified oh I think it's the first time i ever heard that <laughs> maybe <laughs> hopefully Yeah, it's, it's hard to keep up. Yeah, so many <laughs> yeah, I don't know who those people are. Looks like I, you. I, I'm, uh, I'm not gonna lie. It's 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 really strange for a Friday show for the doors to be at six and the first band goes on at seven. That's uh, yeah, that's it makes just sense. a strange make, way to do things. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah, it's like usually it's probably just later. trying to get out of there early. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah. And we usually play with it's usually like yeah. four, like something like that, but I don't know. 12, 12 probably is when the last band plays. Yeah, we good though. We're excited. 40 minute sets. Hey man, uh, the skanks and dank have the primo spots, so it's all right. There you go. <laughs> okay. And we'll be there, man. We'll be watching. We're gonna enjoy it. Uh, that's another thing. Does anybody know set times? Yeah. Uh, we go on at 9.15, Skanks go on at 10. Do you know Charles? And Dreadland? <laughs> I, think, I think we go on at 8. We're the second We're the second band to play. I thought y'all were headlining. No. What do you mean we're going on last, dude? Whoever <laughs> wrote the, the order of that shit is fucking intellectually disabled. Hey. <laughs> yeah, who made so the is flyer? Jerry Wayne the headliner? I have no fucking idea, man. Right, maybe it's Avery Jade. Does, does anybody know Jerry or Avery? <laughs> can we can we call them right quick? Can we get the, the right. number? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Wayne. Well, I know uh, Ariel is uh, busy watching the stars play, so she's got nothing but time to kill. Uh, Ariel, if you're watching this show, uh, contact either Avery Jade or Jerry Wayne and find out who the fuck is headlining this Friday show. Because apparently yeah. people on the show don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was Tank. Fuck no. <laughs> See, that's the problem when you give bands freedom of choice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God we're not president. <laughs> well, if I was president, there wouldn't be a presidency. <laughs> really? And and what and what would happen there? I'm I'm curious about that. Oh, if I were president, I would basically uh, murder everyone in government, and then make, and also the police and military as well, and, and, all, and all the business leaders as well. Hang them, uh, uh, decapitate them, you know, get the, you know, get the fucking, you know, the thing out, and uh, you know, slice slice their heads off, and then after that, uh, make all the all the citizens leave themselves. And they need a big bullet. <laughs> That is the worst you idea I've ever heard in my life. It would totally work, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's not in politics. I, I, I think New York City right now at this very moment is proving that when the people govern themselves, everything turns to shit. Yeah. <laughs> 
We all love a little chaos. <laughs> Here's your show times. Chaos. That's Grell. That was a good show. That's not this week. That's, I remember uh, that show. Week. Dude, that's like a show from 100 yeah, yeah. years ago. That's a cool looking flyer. That was uh, a few months. <laughs> a few months ago, yeah. That, but I'm not gonna lie, Growl? that was a great show. No, that was years ago. The pizza place next to Growl is no, no. Growl. It was not even that long ago. <laughs> Bill, <laughs> Bill was our drummer at that point. Hey man, but that pizza. That y'all pizza. know Bill. Y'all know Bill Ford from the Deep, right? <laughs> yeah, we know. I know Bill. Everyone, everyone takes the cup. <laughs> everyone comes for Growl. I just can't get over that pizza. Pizza up there is so good. <laughs> uh, so, Ricky, I know that, that our guests on the panel here have music videos or songs that they would love to let the people know. We're in the prime <clears throat> section right in the middle of the show. Let's let the people know what we got going on this Friday. Coming up right now is going to be the P Town Skanks <laughs> live playing some Miss. <laughs> Ooh, I God. Oh, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Tony, some fight. <laughs> Oh, this is our new mission on the chair. Throwback. <laughs> oh, I missed that, Dave. <laughs> you, you didn't have the fucking grab that broke. I have the most awkward boner right now. <laughs> <laughs> and notice no vocals. Yes. Funny, funny thing, I forgot my strap that day, so I had to use a piece of paracord and gloves. <laughs> <laughs> It worked, but man, I had a whole my, my my shoulder was torn up after that. That made me so happy. It looks like fun. <laughs> Is that Gull from Gorgoroth on drums? <laughs> yeah, I mean, kinda, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Why not? Oh, that music man bass, though. <laughs> I miss it. Oh yeah. Is it a bongo? Yeah. <laughs> it's the same one that the uh what's that band? The Omnific? Those those guys play? Not once. I ain't no low hands. Yeah, tasty little bass lick there.
All right, man, that looked like fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> felt it the whole time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that whole song was Fucking fun. Hey, man, that was badass. I think that. Hey, y'all, y'all wait. We got Charles coming up on box for that puppy. Yeah, it'll be the next Woo! one, like, hopefully a couple weeks, maybe less. Uh, I've noticed that there is a lack of like actual professional music videos for P Town. Is is that uh, intentional? Uh, we just got we. I mean, that's next. That's next on our agenda to do. I know uh, Pearl Jam refused to do like staged uh, music videos for the longest time because they felt it was fake. Do, do you do you think it's fake? No, no, nothing like that. Not if you recorded the music. I mean, you just yeah. had fun. Like, yeah. Yep. As long as the instruments aren't fake in the recording, it's fine. Right, right. Yep. <laughs> Hell yeah, Charles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounded like a Charles Burke. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy's drinking his so, margarita. I, I got I got to ask uh, Dreadland, oh, yeah. what, what's the uh, inspiration behind the masks? Oh. Well, oh. mine's more of the serial killer esque, you know what I mean? I'm just very chop them up. <laughs> chop them up, bury them, eat them, wear them. <laughs> uh, I, I guess we all have our own like personal thing behind it. Mine is just, you know, I'm I'm, a, I'm just a mirror image of you. That's all I am, you know. Uh, that, that, I guess that's the only way I look at it, and I laugh all the fucking time. <laughs> so, <Yeah. you> know. <laughs> uh, I think. Well, the first the that's first Ace Freely shows, back there. The first <laughs> the first few shows we did, um, we didn't have masks, and I I think I. I think I wanted to do masks. I mean, because we used to do them before he joined, yeah. but we never like really implemented it. I mean, um, I wore corpse paint actually yeah. for a long time, and then that just be- took too long. So I just put the same corpse paint that I'd use on my mask, and then yeah. <laughs> and then Charles just likes being a submissive gimp, so. Yeah. Or not Charles. He's just missing a gag ball. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a leash. And a leash. Yeah. Eventually, I want to get like the Rocky Horror get up. That's yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rocking the Rocky Horror. Yeah. yeah. Please meet me. Hope you've met my. Handyman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're I know true. a lot of folks like to uh, cite the the bands that gave them the inspiration, but were there any movies that inspired your band? Oh yeah, Ooh. Clockwork Orange, yeah, Texas Clockwork Chainsaw Orange. Massacre, yeah. Clockwork Orange is a big one. For me, E.T. Yeah. the Killer, not really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, oh, dude, it's a human centipede. Oh, yeah. <laughs> human centipede too. Yeah. The second oh, one. The fucking baby crush. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, yeah. Oh, another one, actually, on the serious note, is Natural Born Killers. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Uh, <laughs> fucking. Tenacious D in the pick of Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. Actually, personally, growing up as a kid, my main one of my main inspirations getting into music was watching School of Rock, dude. Like fucking, I wanted to be like Jack Black, fucking have an SG and shit. Oh shit. <laughs> now this is not a, a movie, but if anybody knows what EverQuest is, uh, it's an yeah. old school <laughs> MMORPG. Precursor to uh, Warcraft. No, it was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, that that's actually where Dreadland uh, kind of started off with ideas and shit. Yeah, there's I'm a, a huge EQ nerd. There's a map called <laughs> the Dreadlands. Yes, and that's where I got the name. <laughs> 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 I love EverQuest. There you go. <laughs> yeah, how many fucking hours do you have? 
<laughs> oh, dude, it's years. It's years okay. of time. I've spent thousands of dollars on it. God damn. No, nope, no, nope, we're not going to do that here. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I know you're wearing a mask, but you have really nice teeth. Oh, thank there you. There you go. <laughs> My parents paid for them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, tell me, P-Town, were y'all inspired by any movies as well as the, the music that you've stated? Yeah. Uh, on our first album, there's a song called Buckley, and I wrote that about a character uh, from the movie Dead Man on Campus which uh, had uh, uh, Mark Paul Gosselar. Mark Paul Gosselar. And, yeah, I love that movie. And there's a character that they try to recruit as a roommate named Buckley, and he's like, you know, schizo and crazy. So we, that's what we wrote the song about. Um, also, video games. Uh, I wrote uh, one of our new songs. It's not been recorded yet, but I wrote it about Diablo, uh, oh, Diablo, Diablo 1. So yeah, all kinds of media influence. Definitely a lot of video game influence. Um, I grew up playing NES and SNES, so you know a lot of those melodies really get stuck in my head. You know, like the Mega Man Two uh, soundtrack, like the you know I, I grew up with that. So that kind of stuff, you know, always sticks with me. That's why I like bands, you know, like Within the Ruins and stuff that have that like Nintendo core sound. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows that, but that whole series is great. It's like what uh, is it? Legacy of Kane. Uh, oh hell yeah, yeah. Soul Reaver, um, all that Blood Omen. Um, that whole series like inspired me musically, at least a little bit. But yeah, it's a great game. I grew up playing it. Like uh, Dreamcast. Yeah. And, uh, and the into X the first Xbox. Speaking so of Xbox, P-Town's Xbox P-Town's 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 also a podcast. narrative. <laughs> well, I was asking, uh, since uh, Dreadland has uh, you know mass uh, going on in a whole uh, or about them, is there a narrative that Dreadland wants to express to us? Because I know, you know, the Argonaut is from a distant planet, and the Deep were, uh, you know, uh, the, the first uh, man to discover fire. So I was just wondering, uh, does Dreadland, uh, <laughs> do, do they have a, a stake in the creation of this planet or other planets beyond? Spread the Dread. Yeah, spread the Dread is our only yeah. message. Just like our <laughs> We're, like, we're a bunch of think of us as like a bunch of backwoods scary people you know indigenous motherfucker <laughs> yeah. <Nightmare. laughs> yeah. because uh, I, i'll be i'll be honest i've always thought that p-town skanks would be hitler's favorite band if he won <laughs> <laughs> we'd be a second <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even like your dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm German. I don't approve, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, classic. Classic. <laughs> so, Ricky, it's what do you so think so of this? creative cavalcade of characters that i have concoffinated today <laughs> oh it's a good time tonight and uh yeah. you know as long as you play your hearts out this weekend it'll be a great show yes, yes, oh, yes. Yeah. 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 oh just <laughs> yeah man this daddy's Fuck. little friend don't worry play your hearts out man that's oh, yeah. what it's all about Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I I enjoy theatrics. I wish that people who had a mind to do more theatrics had more of an opportunity to you know to make it happen. You got to yes. be really creative these days. Yes, it's fun, man. It's fun, you know, especially when you like meet other like-minded people too. You know, it's your idea, your ideas really start to flow. So it's it's pretty awesome. So. <laughs> 
It's also Kick fun ass. to follow, throw shit out to the audience yeah. and, and just watch well, who yeah. picks it up and or, who, like breaks it, whatever they want yeah. to do. Yeah. We we'll we encourage we encourage right destruction <laughs> and violence. So <laughs> speaking of destruction and violence, there we Johnny go. TV. How you doing, outlaw? Johnny, just enjoying destruction and violence with Dreadland here. All right, all right. P town. Hey, how you doing, Thank brother? Cheerio. How you doing, Dave? To the party. Uh, I'm quite well. Thank you, Johnny. Uh, Johnny is joining us from the west side over in uh, California. Uh, how is everything over there, sir? Every here thing in California kind of, kind of got warm here today. We saw the news helicopters uh, over, a, over a Long Beach uh, police shooting, and uh, a Long Beach police officer got shot. Damn. And... Uh, that's where we stand at with that. But Damn. overall, everything's going good. Jesus, I just I, I was about to eat some pizza, but I said, "No, I better get on Outlaw Video and hold the pizza till later." <laughs> so that's why I'm here to. Well, to thank you for joining in. us. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, Outlaw, did you check your uh, your uh, your uh, your uh, your your link? Not not the link, but the uh, the, the chat room. That's what I'm doing now. I did get behind, I guess. Thank you, everybody I'm in the chat. I'm seeing Arkansas. Seeing Ariel. I'm seeing Ariel. I'm, I'm seeing uh, a whole bunch of our friends and family. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. We are here hanging out with Dreadland and the P-Town Skanks. And Dank, uh, they will be tearing it up over at Ridgely this Friday. This Friday, yes. after all, is uh, April 19th, uh, getting ready for 420, which is on a Saturday. So all you stoners don't have any obligations the following day. So y'all can come to this amazing show and just get blissed out of your fucking ass and then go home and melt into your couch. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm not gonna lie. Y'all are more terrifying in the light than you were in the dark. <laughs> I'm, not I'm, not, I'm not here to judge or anything. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> from my perspective. Uh, but that's awesome, man. Yeah. I'm so glad that people like Pete Town Skanks, like Dank, like Dreadland are still concerned about putting on a good live show. There are so many bands, especially around here, that just think you show up, you just play your shit, and don't really move on stage, and uh, you, you did your job. And no, no, that, that is not the case. You have to make these people want to come back to see you again. Oh, yeah. I can't stand going to a show and just watching everybody just kind of stand in one spot <laughs> the entire time. It drives yeah. me nuts. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, Dude, I remember back in like man. I remember back in like two thousand one. I went to uh, Taproot, uh, Incubus, and Deftones. It was all the same concert. Uh, Incubus stood completely still. Deftones did their huffy puppy, you know, cocaine overdose kind of bullshit. Tap yeah. <laughs> actually put on a live show, and by the end of the show, everybody was like, "Dude, fuck Incubus, fuck Deftones." Taproot was the fucking shit, and unfortunately, they didn't know how to write good songs, so that was their detriment. Oh shit! <laughs> so what's great is about uh, Dreadland and about P Town and about Dank is that y'all actually write good music and perform it well live. And that's why everybody really needs to come out to the show this Friday. Come out to Ridgely, pay $12, the weirdly numbered $12, uh, to come see this amazing night of bands. Yeah, man. You guys won't regret it. Be the nope. best twelve dollars you've Absolutely. ever spent. I promise. It's gonna be really <laughs> nice. 
And then also, Friday, uh, so for, if, if, if any of the bands uh, are listening that are on the show, but they're not on this show, uh, please, if you have drums, uh, break them down off stage. Because if you bring them down <laughs> on stage while the next band is trying to set up, you're going to piss off a lot of people. You don't want to do that. You want friends. Especially you in want that, people to like you. Space. You can walk very far. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Is there anything that you would recommend to uh, bands out there that are listening that are just starting up that uh, there are some pet peeves for bands that are already established? Uh, what, what drives you crazy when you're on stage, when you're about to get on stage, when you're about to get off stage, and these, these motherfuckers are doing this bullshit that are in my fucking way or whatever? What are some pet peeves for a live act? I think you said it, you know, just drummers breaking down their sets on stage. It's like when, whenever I'm, you know, any of my bands are going to play live. Like once we're done playing, we, we throw everything off stage as quickly as we can. Then you wind yes. up your tables and put yes. away your guitar and put away your cymbals and all that stuff. When you get off stage, I, I watched, I watched yeah. a drummer, you know, I'm not going to name any names, but I watched a drummer. <laughs> He had like two double bass pedals and he had like a plethora of cymbals. And when, as soon as they were done, I seen him taking one cymbal off at a time. I'm like, really, man? Like, get off stage. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, really, when, when unloading or like packing down after playing, keep your shit out of like the load zone. So if people need to yeah. come up bring their shit in, they're yeah. able to actually like bring it up the stairs and set it off to the side so you can move stuff down. Kind of helps a little bit too. Yeah. Be nice my to your sound guys. <laughs> yeah. Yes. My my big thing is like after playing, like give us like five minutes to catch our breath. <laughs> like yes. I know everybody I know like everyone's hyped up and wants to come say what's up, high five and hug and shit, but like I'm fat, I smoke, I'm <laughs> tired, I'm sweaty as fuck, I'm out of breath. Give me five minutes, please, and then we can hug and shoot the shit all night long. <laughs> 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 that's about it for me <laughs> absolutely dude i totally fucking agree especially with a venue as small as the lounge if the band is loading off stage left load on stage right do yeah. not get in their way while they're trying to get off stage and certainly yeah. do not start loading when the drummer hasn't unloaded yet yeah yes yeah. <laughs> I've seen that happen too. Get shit mixed up sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I've seen people take other people, people like, like, my gear off. like Wait, no. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now I know uh, Ridgely Lounge is not really made for backlining, but are y'all a fan of backlining? I do like it. It's 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 kind of nice. Uh, yeah. An eight by ten and an SPT four pro. Uh, it's they're heavy. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Someone else has got a cab up there. I can just slap my head. Good to go. I mean, I'm a vocalist, so I don't do jack shit. Except drink, <laughs> beer. Except drink beer and smoke weed and watch you guys load up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I'm not a big fan of back of back. Uh, you know, having yeah. a back line, but but my rig is really simple, and you know, I, I need my rig to you know to get my sound. I, Playing on someone else's amp, you know, I feel like it wouldn't be dialed into my, you know, what what I want. So that that would be my only issue. Um, I would, I guess, I'd use someone else's cab. I wouldn't mind that, but I really, I'd, I'd rather just use my stuff. But again, I've downsized, so my my stuff's really easy. I can get on and off stage. You know, it didn't take me my, it didn't take me five ten minutes. Yeah, and I know uh, bands have like specialty equipment. I, I know P Town, uh, y'all have a specialty lead microphone, like the the old like fifties fucking you know microphone. Yeah, it's and a Sure Fifty Five. Uh, sound problems with that? No, it's amazing. It's a Sure Fifty Five, uh, and it, it's uh, just the run of the mill Fifty Five. It's not the special edition. 
or anything, and I've never had any sound problems with it uh, live or you know playing at in the studio or anything like that. It's it's a it's a, a it's a great mic. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't use anything else. Uh, I've had I've had that specific brand for about 10 years i lost one and i got another one just because there's never any feedback it's a it's a freaking awesome it's an awesome mic the, the sound guys ever give you shit for bringing in your own microphone no no they're usually pretty cool about it uh what they don't like is what because we have three vocalists they don't sometimes they don't like to have to you know, bring an extra a couple of mics on stage or stands or whatever. But then, uh, when they hear us, they they understand why. Now, with your other two vocalists, if they get uh, sick from the house microphones, do they blame the other bands or do they blame the venue? Uh, you know, I don't know, <laughs> Dan. Dan, what do you what do you do, <laughs> Dan? <laughs> I, I mean, that hadn't happened to me. You know, I try not. Because uh, I remember uh, we played a show with Mile Zero one time and they gave us COVID, whether they realized they did it or not. Uh, and I never forgave them. <laughs> Damn, that's <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have laughed for all my bad. <laughs> No, no, Sorry, it's not dude. funny because now uh, all all coleslaw tastes awful to me, and I used to love coleslaw. Uh, so now I love uh, it. No. Not the coleslaw. Yeah, I used to hate coleslaw. There's a lot of coleslaw. Give me my slaw. Fucking invaders, though. Slaw. So no. I'm not going to lie. Uh, things have been really weird, like for me and pretty much for everybody that I know since this eclipse. Has the eclipse fucked with y'all at all with your algorithm, with your personal algorithm? No, I don't pay attention to that shit. I, I just live. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like my experience of the eclipse was quite unique. Um, I was all alone eating Jack in the Box. Just out by my truck. Just... Staring at the moon. Eating Jack in the box. What we'll see, our, we'll see our, our vocalist performed a uh, satanic ritual and uh, witnessed the Antichrist being born. But other than that, everything was peachy. You know, everything. Yeah. Nothing, nothing out of the norm. <laughs> I could dig it, man. You know, I didn't want to make that assumption with you, Dan, but uh, thank you for clearing that up. For me. I mean, you know, I, I, I heard, you know, he just told me and I, and I was like, okay, that's cool. That's, you know, that's what you did. That's, that's whatever. I had to be famous now. <laughs> well, I, I, I must say uh, there's been a seismic shift uh, ever since that uh, eclipse. We lost OJ. Uh, we're about to start World yeah. War Three. And uh, Diddy, Diddy, uh, Diddy hasn't been arrested, I don't think. Right, Diddly the Diddler. Did he do it? Did, did he do it? Did he do it? Did he do it? Uh, <laughs> I mean, there, yeah, there's some, there's some he really guilty recordings, and I, I think <laughs> sounds like Diddy did it. He was doing it. Diddy was motherfucking doing it. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, do you, what do you think Diddy did? Do you think Diddy oh, man. did it? Right, he, from what I've understood, he <laughs> uh, <laughs> he liked to promise uh, people careers, especially rappers, you know, uh, young men, and uh, yeah, you know, he uh, you know we call him. He's got the nickname, you know, Diddy the Diddler for a reason. So I mean. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not going to lie, uh, as a teenager growing up when Puff Daddy and Usher became famous, uh, we, I've heard the rumors that Diddy and Usher were a thing since the 90s, so uh, that, that doesn't surprise me. What does surprise yeah. me is the fact that apparently Diddy's dad hung out with Frank Lucas 
uh, if it, th those that don't know, Frank Lucas was uh, Denzel in American Gangster. So apparently Diddy's dad was hanging out with that guy that had no problem with shooting people dead in the middle of the street because he knew yeah. nobody would rat on him. So I could see a person like Diddy thinking, oh, I'm untouchable. Right. Shit. Yeah. Like when uh, when the feds got <laughs> when they pulled him off his plane, it was kind of funny because he was like putting his hands up like, fuck y'all, I ain't gonna say shit. And the feds were like, nah, we ain't trying to talk to you, bro. And they like arrested everybody he who's with. <laughs> yeah. It so just goes I, to show that like pretty much the, the mob runs fucking music as it is. Uh, Ricky Ricky has hmm. told me multiple stories about how the mob runs music in DFW. Uh, Ricky, do you have any stories that could corroborate? You know, do does D DFW have a ditty? Uh, maybe Rob Van Winkle, oh. but he's nice. He's <laughs> nice about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd throw some ice out there for you. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> well, I mean, he's he would be equivalent of Diddy, I guess, in, in that he did like a sexual crime, you know. <laughs> uh, you know but if, if you just research all the major labels like RCA, they were all fucking, you know, mob tied in the you know, 40s and 50s and 60s and everything. Yeah. All right, check it out. <laughs> it's that same one that says Van Quattro. Everybody, welcome to the show, Scott. Warhog! What's up? Shit, yeah. What's up, What's up brother? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I, I gotta tell you, I think Dreadland is smoking heavier weed than Dank is. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Our lead's waste, laced. We ain't gonna tell you with what, though, because then everybody's gonna start copying us. <laughs> but can y'all hand, handle them dabs, though? Oh, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me get my puffco right quick. Shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember one time we played a show out in uh, Shreveport, and this weird couple that liked to drug the bands that would come into town. They drugged me. They gave us these synthesized fucking uh, mushroom pellets, and we were giggling just <laughs> like the Dreadland guys are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Start peeling the skin off your face. <laughs> no, I'm I'm not trying to draw a correlation, but I am saying that yeah. we all sound a lot like we hey, did. Charles, tell tell him about the dude that like FaceTimed us with like jacket off and shit. Oh fuck. <laughs> yeah, nah. somebody somebody called the Dreadland like chat and uh it was like a some fat old dude jerking off he had his legs put on, one leg on each chair like spread eagle and fucking when i answered the call yeah dude it's fucking he gave it two two or three good strokes before i was like oh what the fuck and he like oh. <laughs> tried to cover up oh i i was like tried calling him back a bunch i was like nah bro <laughs> Come Let me help you finish. Let's hang out. <laughs> Honestly, that's why we've been very restrictive with some of the people that we give our links to because we have been dick bombed before. Oh. Yeah, that was the first for me, man. That was the first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but don't dick bomb us, please. please. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> That's just pretty fucking weird. Yeah. Right. Like why? like, why? It's just like a prank. It's kids having a good time or adolescent adults. You know what I mean? Just oh, it's that a, was no adolescent adult. That was, that, was, that, was, that, was a, that was a very 50 year old looking adolescent adult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was just having fun. You know, I was just yeah. having fun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, th those those testicles were lower than my self esteem. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, 
so Scott, how are you, right. sir? How are things in Warhawk land? I'm good. Uh, I, I, we're doing good. I we actually had a big kind of call earlier because we were um, I think we we're going to engage a, a PR firm to help us with the next year's worth of releases. So we had to have like a we had to have a call with that. Then we had to like call the other guys to tell them what's going on. It started this whole kind of <laughs> like I, <coughs> at a working evening. It was, but it, other than that, it's good. We're got that new single out and it's people are checking it out and we're just getting ready for the show on the 11th at uh and gems hell yeah yeah we're looking forward to that big time we're going out of town actually we're going to austin the weekend before so over cinco de mayo we're going to be down in austin san marcus playing a couple shows but mostly just to practice and get ready again or is that still coming up that's still coming up. We have yeah, we're that we're gonna go do that the weekend before the Arlington show. Okay. So that way we'll be nice and practiced up to put on a good good set in, at yeah, Diamond really? Gems. Yeah, there it is, May fourth and May fifth. See if I can do this. Yeah, that's not gonna work. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, we're we're gonna sure go see already what, have that flyer uploaded, but we're gonna go see what happens in, in Austin, see if we can't get into some trouble down there. Man, it's a great so, plan. Fuck yeah. What what does uh, P Town have on the horizon past this Friday? There it is, yo. Hey, there's us. Heavy metal from Dallas. So Austin and mm-hmm. Anderson's Mill Pub and then at Ragnar's in San Marcos. That's the place to get lost right there. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna find that place. <clears throat> all the all the all the stuff that's come online looks, makes that place look really fun. So I'm excited about going down there. There there might not be anybody there, but you know, we'll figure that out when we get there. <laughs> but hopefully some people will show up. So but yeah, we got those two coming up. Yeah, then, man. Safe travels and all the best on that show. Everybody right. in Austin, we know you're out there listening. Show yeah. up. Please, I think both shows are free, so there's really no reason if anybody's even halfway interested in coming and checking us out in those areas. But there, there's no cover at the door at either one of those shows. So, yeah, road trip, yeah. So, and then we'll be back here for the Diamond Gems game with uh, Argonaut and Rivet Head and HPV. So, uh, question. Is uh, a Diamond Gems playing book and metal shows again now? Yeah, but you pretty much, I hate to speak for them, but uh, the bartenders who you need to talk to, and you kind of, she likes it if you have several bands booked, you know. She doesn't like booking shows. Fair enough. You got to do the legwork for them? Yeah. yeah. She <laughs> likes you to string it together and go, okay, I got these three bands. I'm going to get this other fourth and maybe this fifth band. And if you'll get five metal bands out there, she'll love you. Right on. Mm, okay, awesome. Sure. It's a fun yeah, I remember, uh, <laughs> point in time they weren't letting metal bands come and play there anymore, sadly. At point well, in time. I mean, that's why bands really have to take the sublime approach. And I'm talking about sublime is in the band and start playing house shows, man. Cause that's yeah. pretty much the only venues that are left. Yeah. We're getting, we're getting there, we're getting there at least. Well, yeah. diamond jams is a viable option for anybody who wants to go through the trouble of booking your own shows. A lot of bands are doing it. They've got a lot of good shows, and of course, we're really excited about this show here coming up. Yeah, I'm weeks. really, I'm really looking forward to it too. Yeah, no, I'd, yeah. I'd book some shows. I wouldn't mind. Who do I got to talk to? If you if Thank you, you go on there, and Facebook also page, there there's an unspoken rule where basically, if you play venues outside of DFW and you're successful at them, if you come back to DFW, you'll be more successful in dfw yeah. if people know outside of town that you're actually good so if you play yeah, fort worth you play dallas and nobody gives a shit if you go out and play denison or you go out and play waco or you go out and play heiko or you know uh, fucking these random weird fucking places in the middle of texas 
and you blow that place up, for some reason you come back to town and suddenly you're a conquering hero. Right. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So, uh, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. I, I know that Sully Erna from Godsmack once said, don't play too far outside of your uh, designated zone. Uh, but I guess that works for Massachusetts. That doesn't work for Texas. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You actually have to make a name for yourself outside of town for people in town to give a shit about you. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I like so, those stars. Uh, I definitely encourage right the, I, I, I encourage all bands, especially if you're heavy, go to Louisiana, go to Arkansas, go to Oklahoma. Go to West Texas, go to Lubbock, go to Amarillo. And if you kill there, you come back here, then suddenly people here will hear about how you did over there. And they'll go, oh, you're actually worth a shit. Okay, I'll go see you. Yeah. We're, that's that's kind of our plan this year is to do, we're, like I said, we're doing Austin this spring, and then we're going to do Oklahoma City in the fall. And then we'll see what happens in 2025. But that's it. Awesome. Not that I don't want to play in Dallas. I mean, obviously, I would love to play <laughs> as many shows as possible. <laughs> but, but at a certain point, I mean, like, there, where do you, where do you go? You know, like, there's four venues here. You know, like that. that yeah, are they really... close all the good ones. Ga yeah. I, 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 I miss playing at Gas Monkey. That place was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Gas Monkey was super uh, dope. They, they changed it to Amplified and stuff at yeah, a point in time. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, th and then they wanted to charge for parking, even though it was, yeah. you know, not fenced in. And it just, it was a, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, in Deep Ellum, too, period. Like, you always are going to pay for parking. Oh, yeah. 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 Paying at least 20 bucks, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean... <clears throat> We'll, we'll see what happens in some of these other areas. I know other bands have gone out there and done shows here and there, but I think you, know, you just kind of make it part of your routine. But we'll, we'll we'll see what happens after Austin. They might be a total nightmare. We might say, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I mean, what's, what's great about Texas is that, like, you can literally book a two-week tour. Never leave Texas. And That's all the can play every day. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Our very own, if I can get you down there. And Ariel! Ariel! Just hey friends, Ariel. sorry, it's really loud. It's super loud here. <laughs> How was the game? It's actually really great. We're doing awesome. Um, no, there's still so much more game to go, but uh, Adi made a great save. It was like a Superman save. Uh, so if you can catch it on a replay, um, super dope. What? Oh, no, How much? How much vomit is in the women's restroom? Not a whole lot right now, but I'm sitting on the floor and it's carpeted, and I'm a little concerned. <laughs> you're, hey, you're, you're in a, you're in a, against all odds. Yes. Hey, I came and seen you guys. I love. Yeah. That. Well, uh, my my uh, my other band, Corpse Flower, played with you. I, I'm the bass yes. player now. Yeah, I remember you. Dope. Yes, I loved you guys. Uh, your vocalist was so sweet. She came up afterwards and was like, "How do you do that?" I go, "I don't know. I just do it, dude. I don't know. <laughs> Make it happen." I'm very sorry for the background noise. Really. I'm hey, oh, just glad you took the time you're to good, join us. Good. We need to send some stars, some, you know, original aerial luck back your way. Oh, no. Yep. Yeah. Um, if anything breaks out, please make sure that you film it and scream world star. Well, okay. Certainly. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's all dance together for Ariel and the stars. We're just gonna fill you in. Um, I Red say wind. dope a lot, and yeah. a lot of the times it's very intentional. Dope, 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 d
Don't, 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 don't. That's facts. Go stars. Love you guys. Y'all are awesome. Much love. Thanks for having me you. on your bandwagon there, Ariel. Make plenty of room. So much room. On the I don't know who that was. I can't see where that's coming from. Stars are about to go become that's champions me. of the world. <laughs> Dude, uh, apparently Ariel got four row seating, so that's fucking awesome. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, I love the stars, and it's actually not my seat. It's somebody else's. They go, oh, hey, do you want to come tonight? And I go, yeah. No, but yeah, it's gonna hurt really bad tomorrow. Well, I'm glad you're having a great time. How's Jeff doing? He's good, he's uh, super drunk. Nice, all right. Proud right. of you, Jeff. Somebody's gotta drive home, and I uh, really hope <laughs> that it's not him. Anyways, I think all the guys are going to go. Sucks. Oh, this is the ask this question. And we just, it's just like you staring at the fucking yeah. <laughs> Nobody. Nope. That's okay. <laughs> it, it's okay. It's okay. I'm a Mavs fan myself. I'll be on that Stars bandwagon as soon as they get going in the playoffs. <laughs> okay, so I, back, I, I believe you. I, uh, I'm, I'm definitely everyone. rooting for yes, my boys in uh, Rivethead who have just released, recently uh, recorded a pro Dallas Stars song that they're hoping will get played at Dallas Stars games. So uh, yeah. here's hoping for my boys, uh, Mike and uh, – and, uh, Fucking Steve. Steve, man! I hope uh, I, I I hope they play your song, man. Yeah, damn right. And then uh, and then hopefully hopefully uh, this video comes out to uh, the people at Stars, you know, upper deck, and they realize that against all odds should totally make a pro star song, and then uh, against all odds will make a pro star song. I'm Same. not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I told my husband to go. How <laughs> super great would it be if the Dallas Stars played our song at a game? I would flip out. I'd legit like just ball my. I don't cry for anybody, but I would cry for that. Well, I'm saying uh, be because it's Stars and because it's hockey, uh, "Cold" <laughs> would actually be a perfect song for the Stars. Absolutely. Hey, did y'all talk about Ricky's song yet? I missed that completely. If you did. No, no, we've been talking about masks and drugs. Doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Thank you, Ariel. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Um, do y'all remember Jessica Rabbit and um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Of course. So her Fuck, song, yeah. Kath kind Turner. of like, yeah, I love. It feels like it's that kind of vibe, and I really love it. I've listened to it over and over again. Um, wow. There's like other aspects in it. I really. Really enjoyed it. No, they're great. David Jarvis oh, is the mastermind. The way, the way he does the piano keys, so slow through it and things. Well, it's it's like four and five. Pretty wild. So it wouldn't be a song without you, David Jarvis. It was a pleasure and an honor, and thank you all very much. 
And thank you, Ariel, for pointing that out. I always, I always appreciate being told that I'm awesome. <laughs> You're awesome. Uh, all right, no. all right. the, 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 the fact, the fact of the matter is, Ricky is fucking awesome. Ricky made that song sexual and violent, and I appreciate that. Did you say sexual and violent? That's right. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> I can't. Man. So many people Ghost look stars. at me weirdly in this hallway. Um, Go Stars, I love Dreadland. I love all you guys. Go P-Town Saints. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show, and I will catch you on next Wednesday. Woo! You're awesome. Woo! Thank you. Thank you, Ariel. Peace out, sauerkraut. Thank you. Against, against all odds. Uh, Thank you, Ariel. You're awesome. Go Stars. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. All right. So, uh, gentlemen, we are coming up on the end of this uh, interview. So I just like to ask uh, P Town and then Dreadland. Uh, P Town, how would you like to be remembered? <laughs> <laughs> um, like <to> <laughs> hey, I said P-Town. I said P-Town first, and we'll get to Dreadland oh, after P-Town, how do you want to be remembered? Oh, there we go. Uh, I don't know. I just want to – I want people to enjoy it. You know, that sounds stereotypical, but I know we're a little weird and a little different, but – I want people to recognize the the strangeness in it and appreciate the strangeness. Because not all art is supposed to make you feel happy. Uh, yeah. Some of it's supposed to make you feel weird. And I yeah. think we're a little bit more on the weird. Yeah, we got we got we got a few new ones coming out that uh, we really uh, we really uh, uh, um, changed up how we write. We changed our, our writing style there. They're quite a bit different, and we, we can't wait to release oh, them. Okay. Um, we're, we're really excited about it. And like That's I said, we, like, we, there's a lot of weird stuff we've been touching. You know, we Ooh. like to cross genres a lot, you know, mix metal and it's punk with so rockabilly and psychabilly. It's, it's fun. It's a, good, it's a good time. What do you mean to do? Oh, yeah. There we go. And uh, what, what does P-Town have on the horizon past this Friday? Right yeah, like I said, just we got a couple of songs we're working on. We recorded. Uh, we're just uh, they're in, they're in the middle of getting uh, edited, so uh, we'll be releasing you know a couple songs here uh, shortly. And uh, you know, like I said, we're gonna go back into the uh, go back to the studio and just keep recording. Like I said, we got we got a lot of new ones coming out that uh, we really really been uh, experimenting with our writing a lot. Wonderful. Hey, can oh, we yeah. listen to so this song here? Be live. on the lookout. Oh, do it. Do it. This was around Christmas time. That's where I'm wearing the red and green. I call out to you. I call out to
This one was on our last EP. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> I've seen Hell yeah. I've seen Slipknot live. I've seen System of a Down live. I've seen fucking Rammstein live. And honestly, all three of those were in the same concert. And you know what? I would rather see Pete John Stanks. There you go. <laughs> Just Bullsh bullshit. <laughs> no, no, no. No. Because y'all put on a show because y'all care about the live show, and I appreciate that. And I know that the rest of DFW appreciates that shit too. We try. We do our best. So thank y'all. We do our thank, best. Thank y'all very much. Uh, so uh, before y'all head out, uh, P Town Skanks, how do y'all want to be remembered? Just crazy, just insane, misunderstood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mis misunderstood fits i think oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Dreadland, how do y'all want to remember <laughs> um good question different and or insane in general I don't really right. want to be remembered for anything. I just yeah. want to be able to play music. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Want people to think, like, are they crazy? Or are they not crazy? Uh, uh, be something that someone can escape uh, reality with, you know? Um, yeah. Um, kind of like as growing up, some of your favorite artists, uh, as they were kind of that, that crutch in life. I just hope maybe one day, you know, uh, I could I, that could be something for somebody, you know? Yeah, you guys need a giant stage. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Well, I know I can't wait for this Friday, and I know that the rest of DFW can't wait for this Friday. Uh, this is going to be a fantastic show. Uh, 
cancel all your plans for Friday and go to the Ridgely and come Please. see P Town Skanks, the fucking dank, uh, Avery Jade, uh, the Dreadland, uh, Jerry Wayne, and the Unqualified. And if I missed another band, I do apologize, but it's going to be a fantastic band. It's going to be a fantastic show, and please be there. And I, I wish nothing but continued success for all of y'all. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. You do, you're the best. Thanks for having us on. This has been awesome. Thank Pleasure you very has much. Been all Thanks right. for having us. This was fun. Can't, I can't wait for Friday. Let's do this. Oh, yeah, boys. We'll see you Friday. <laughs> All right, Ricky, what do we got on the concert calendar? Get your asses out and have some fucking fun, everybody. We got a lot of good shows coming up. Smoking big doinks out here. All right, in Amish. <laughs> All right we got uh, May 18th. Uh, we've been promoting this show for a few weeks now. The Hillbilly Throwdown Float Fest, uh, put together by our good friend Megan Moshpit. Uh, it includes Cortez, 180 West, uh, Hillbilly... Uh, fuck, I can't orchestra. read that. I'm sorry. Hillbilly um, Orchestra. Yeah, Hillbilly Orchestra. That's right. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I get drunk and I forget shit. Uh, Jimbo <laughs> Moody, uh, the, king, yeah. the king of the trailer park. Also, dude, so this is a great time to uh, get high in the middle of the woods and just go floating down the river. It's going to be a wonderful time for everybody. Uh, and apparently the facilities are quite adequate. And they will be bringing in food trucks from, uh, you know, places that, you know, are uh, recommended. Oh, yeah. yeah, and you got bolt neck sound backing you up so you don't have to worry about that. Just take it smooth and easy. The location is the star of the river. Here's that OTEP show. Right. May 5th. So, oh, yeah. Hit us up That's for tickets, right. by the way. Uh, they're twenty dollars through us, tickets. or they're twenty-five the day of. With Cinco Red de Land. Mayo. And then, of course, here's that flyer for this weekend, where everybody's going. Yeah. And then there's this amazing show coming up Saturday, May the eleventh. The eleventh. That's right. Um, we we also have another Riven show happening. Warhawk deck and. Eat, hedonistic punk photos. Yeah. All bands I really enjoy right there. That's right. It's going to be a free show, so uh, make sure to do your drugs in your cars. Oh. And the whiskey at the bar. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. I, I hope you care a lot about dogs in kennels because Vermafest is all about that. Drowning Pool, Vane, Sanction, Warhog, and uh, can't read that one, with, but there's ears. So hopefully you will be listening to us while we say, please adopt these dogs because they need a home and you look like a willing participant. <laughs> Get on over here, sucker. Take a puppy home with you, would you? Would you, would you, yeah. would you? Yeah, puppy. All right, our brother, our brothers in Iron Man will be playing this show, uh, 420, uh, uh, along with Porsche Modem and uh, Mondo's Bazaars over at Diamond Gems. That would be a great show. Diamond Gems yeah, you know Saloon, everybody. We uh, we in Dreamland. We also have a show going on 420 as well at Haltom Theater. Okay. Uh, Stand by for that, I guys. A flyer <laughs> for it. I'd be happy to show it. I just no worries, dude, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> this is this weekend. 
Okay. All right. So we got uh, Red Red Tech, uh, anti Red dude, anti Red is fucking amazing. Uh, mm-hmm. Hofaker, uh, Cap and Ca- Calavera. Okay. Um, uh, over at Reno's Chop Shop. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's fifteen dollars. Was it April twentieth? Okay, so that's the Saturday as well. A lot of shows happening on four twenty. Uh, I guess there's way more stoners than uh, uh, Mr. Abbott would allow you to believe that there are. But believe me, Big Pharma has not <laughs> taken over just yet. There's a pretty cool show this weekend. Fuck yeah. Uh, but yeah, all right. Uh, gra- okay, the same night as tonight's show, uh, April 19th, over at the Growl Extra Grants, our friend Jared Hensel will be uh, part of that. Let's see. Part of the influence comedy show. Okay. Uh, yeah, moving along. That. Okay. Uh, Saturday, June first, over at uh, the oh, studio shit. in D Bellum. We got Creeper, Creeper. Low Gear, uh, special guest you. Jacob Pierce. Uh, if you know Jacob Pierce, he used to be with uh, As Above, So Below, and also In Vain. Uh, okay. Iron Jaw. Uh, Iron Jaw uh, fans and friends of this show, uh, Life of Scars and Pass the Ammunition. Uh, Donnell Blair, our friend, uh, if he ever wants to come on the show, please tell him. Pass it on. Pass that ammunition. Fuck yeah. All right, my last advice. Uh, let's see, May 18th, it's a Saturday, over at Dr. Jekyll's. Uh, if you're a fan of craft beer, you will love Dr. Jekyll's. Uh, it's, the, it's the kind of beer that uh, you may be a beer connoisseur, but you'll drink three of these, and you will be passed out in front of the stage. And we encourage that. And uh, along with them, you got Grand Illusion, uh, Ultimatum, and Enigma. It's going to be a great fucking show right there. Yeah, I just love the idea of people getting drunk in Pantigo. So fucking cool. Yeah, I used to hit Dr. Jekyll's all the time back in Ooh, college. Ooh, says full of corruption. That's another thing. All right. Now, this is part of the fun of the show. Can you read these uh, band logos? Okay. So, horse modem, I can see. Says full of corruption, I can see. Uh Tyrannical deception, of no. course. Fucking fantastic. Yeah, I know, I know those guys. I don't yeah. know what the fuck that red one is. Bad trip. Bad trip. Yep, absolutely. And then I guess uh, bloody, bloody semen. Oh, gotta laugh. Uh, uh, like all right, name that death metal band. Oh, shit. Donnie, did you catch it? Uh, Tyrannical it. Deception. Of bowels. Bloody Stool. <laughs> okay, now all of these. Oh, fuck. I don't have time. <laughs> The sinister, wormed, reviled. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Severed savior. Necessary. Uh, <laughs> Enterprise, Earth. <laughs> Enterprise Earth and Fury. Crown Ma- uh, Magenta. Magenta. I know those. Guys. You know, I'm not trying to tell any bands how to live your life. But I will say this: If you have a logo, please make it legible. <laughs> For the love of God, no. I, w- I want I want yeah, to man. advertise your band, but it's very difficult when your logo is bloody semen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell what it says. <laughs> Ironically, that like that one band that's that like, looks cool. Like like H- Williams. Something, something. It's like thirty-six letters. <laughs> Another kick-ass show at uh, Haltham Theater. Yeah, I want to go. I want to go to that one for sure. Abigail Williams. Oh yeah, yeah, that'll be good. There we 
go. Cinco de Mayo, All baby. Right. Come check it out. There we go. Yeah, Love sick yeah. drug. Our 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 brother uh, Lou Morris is part of that. Iron Jaw. Our brother Rick Perry. Uh, I hate a uh, wonderful bolt neck band. Swarm, Shout out to you, uh, Eric. Uh, I know Eva the Cora, swarm guys. Uh, Those are cool guys. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, Dreadland gonna be a part. Of, man, Cinco de Mayo sounds. Well, Dreadland, like those guys right again. Here. Damn. Ah, <laughs> all the saturated fucks. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Native okay. sons. MC, Native sons. Heavy metal. Creeper. Oh, Creeper. Oh, yeah. Lacerated within. In Keller, I, I didn't realize that they allowed metal in Keller, but that's cool. <laughs> oh, uh, I just saw the last one, Cold and Orgy, with our friends Rivethead playing that show. Oh, that's right, yeah. Rivethead added to yeah, that. Yeah, good show. for Thank them. you for remembering. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, so this is the final show. I'm going to check the chats. We're going to get the hell out of here with a couple of songs. Thank you for being here, everybody. Okay. Uh, uh, if if you us. were a fan hey, of DFW it. music, you will remember Ugly Mustard and Slow Roosevelt are yeah. part of your heart. Yeah, I'm a big Slow Roosevelt fan. Big <laughs> fan. Fuck yeah. Thank you, Joe. So Bell. I just want to say you thank you for being here. Thank, thank you, Dreadland. Thank you, Hank from Dank. Thank you, fucking Pete Town Skanks. Thank you all very much. Uh, this Friday is going to be a fucking amazing show. Everybody, go out to the Ridgely because you will not be disappointed. Every band there brings a different perspective of music, and you will totally appreciate it if you are a fan of music. Hell yeah. Thank you all very much. So thank you all very much for joining us tonight. We are going to play you. some music. Some of y'all's, some of Ricky's, some of Dank's, and uh, we're going to make the rest of this Wednesday evening a fun-filled venture. So stick around if you want to. If not, have a wonderful night and a pleasant tomorrow. Thank yes. you very much. Blow your brains out with Ricky Warden, Dave Jarvis, and Ariel. Peace. Don't take it easy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Smoking on that symbiote. <laughs> Drifting in the sea, and just fade away.
Foot.
right, so that's Dank. Catch Dank this weekend at Ridgely Theater with all the other cool bands on the show tonight. The P-Town Skakes and uh, Dreadland. That, that band ought to be a lot of fun live. Like I said, they deserve a big stage. Hey, Dave Jarvis. Is Rolling Stone hey, Magazine bro. called yet about the song? Uh, no, but I did do, uh, I did uh, submit our song, uh, the song that you and I did, to uh, 88.1, the jazz station over at uh, UNT. So okay. uh, um, I'm, I'm waiting back on that one. Uh, and uh, I also started uh, submitting that uh, that one track, uh, Children of the Last Man, to the metal stations around here. That's uh, a new project that I'm working on. What's it? What is that again? Uh, the the project, the band is called Children of the Last Man. I, I sent you a MP3. Um, 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 it's uh, a, a lot like uh, Neck. Yeah, I did it out of Bolt Neck. Uh, it's going to be that track that I sent you. It's going to be on the Bolt Neck uh, compilation album and also possibly on the uh, the album that I'm planning on releasing. It's uh, basically my homage and my love of Crowbar, Caius, and Electric Wizard, um, you know, done my way. Uh, I'm pretty yeah, proud you're of it. Sick, and, dude. Uh, you're fucking I'm, sick. I'm, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to uh, maybe that will get a little bit of attention. I've already submitted that to a couple record uh, or a couple radio stations as well. Uh, you got that? Yeah, man. I, I wish you the very fucking best, bro, because you deserve it. I've Thanks, listened bro. to our song now. I don't know shit, you know, enough times where, you know, I mean, I just really like it. It's a really enjoyable song, but it's mostly because of you. Like I'm enjoying what you're playing, and that's not. Oh, a, no, no, you, you, you added the sexy. I just added the bass. <laughs> no, the song, the music, the way you play the piano keys and drag them out in spots, and the way it's emphasized with the strings and the horns. It's fucking. It's man. I think it's a musical masterpiece. But, David Jarvis, I think that of most all the existential stuff that I listen to. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, dude, it was a pleasure working with you. And um, I, I guess now is as good a time as any. Um, it's been a pleasure working with Dank. Uh, but unfortunately, I am no longer a member of the band. Uh, it's been 12 Ouch. years. And, uh, you know, uh, we had some good times. We had some bad times. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, me and the band had to part ways. And I wish nothing but the best for them. And I hope they wish nothing but the best for me. Um, but I will continue to support and uh, do the best I can to uh, help promote and support uh, my boys and Dank. And so there's this show here this weekend. Would this be the last final show or are you going to be able to hang on for this show here or where, where are you going to be at with this? No, I, I actually quit the band a week ago. I, uh, I didn't want to bring it into the show because I didn't want to distract from. Oh, you know, so you're not our, even yes. playing this show here this weekend. No, no. My last show with Dank was the Magnolia, uh, month or two ago and uh, uh, uh luckily uh, with that i can say with dank that i can't say with a whole lot of other bands that i've been a part of i actually had a good final show with dank which i i, I can't really say <laughs> with a, a lot of the other bands that i've been a part of so it was cool i i didn't realize it was going to be my last show but you know shit happens and um you know, uh, I, I wish them the best, uh, but what they want and what I want are two different things, and never the two shall meet. 
and uh, so that's that's where we're at. But I still wish them the best, and I will try to support and promote them as best I can. Well, you've done that, that's for sure. All right. Well, um, with that, bro, all I know to tell you is that I'm sure that you will do well with whatever you choose to continue to, you know, put your time into and then figure out creative ways to market it because, you know, like I, I like most all the existential songs that I listen to, you know. Well, thank you, brother. Yeah. Um, I mean, did, don't get me did, wrong. It's not uh, like listening to Judas Priest. Judas Priest is my favorite band. So it's not listen, like course. listening to Judas Priest or something, but it's up there. Dude, for what it is, especially that's what I hear because there's a lot of different styles that you venture into. And I go, oh, wow. Okay, he's got that style down and this new kind of sound. Wow, okay. You know, yeah, I like it. Oh, yeah, dude. A after I left Brain, I was like, dude, I'm never doing metal again. But I kept <laughs> coming back to bands like Crowbar and Caius and Electric Wizard and fucking Acid Bath and shit. And I was like, okay, I don't really like the fast metal because I'm a little old. But I've noticed that it really doesn't matter how old you are when you're doing sludge metal. Sludge metal actually lends oh, itself to Oh, so you want to me to sing older. the song... You want me to sing the song like the band Trouble then? That's what you're asking. No, no, no. You keep doing what you do, B. You, you have a voice that's made of butter and honey. And I think that <laughs> your, what, what you do and what I do underneath it is fucking perfect. <laughs> I agree. Thank you. I think so also. Yeah, just make uh, anything that you like, man. And if it carries something and goes somewhere, just man, I'll I can come up with the words for it. But uh, this track I sent you, it's alive. That will be the first track on the Boltneck uh, compilation album, and that is the uh, direction that I'm moving forward with at this. Current it's time. alive is what you sent me. Yes, sir. Wow, kick ass. Okay, I'll make sure I go back and listen to that. Okay. Uh, what it's been is my busy time of year. You know, thankfully I've been busy because I needed the money really bad. But, okay. you know, it takes all of my fucking time and energy, especially driving and all that. And then, you know, the fact that I keep Phoenix also. But yeah, man, I will definitely check that out. And I got your fucking sludge. Like I was into like Black Sabbath is my all time favorite band, unless I'm listening mm -hmm. to Judas Priest and it's Judas Priest <laughs> or Aerosmith, dude. I love some of that fucking old Aerosmith. Van Halen, I love some Van Halen. But Are you able um, to play that track, uh, just out of curiosity, play it on guitar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, oh, I, I I sent it to you. I I emailed it to you early today. Oh, shit. No, I thought you emailed it to me a few weeks ago. I was just going to go back and find it. <coughs> All right. I'm over in my email now. Excuse me. New music okay. track. It's alive. Dude, I'm honored. That is so cool. All right. It's downloading now. Excuse me. You want me to play it? Uh, if you're able to, I would really appreciate it. Just to sure, let the people man. know, you know, especially for the old school grain fans to know that there's still a little bit of metal left in me. And I, I, <laughs> I, still, got, I still got a little bit of that shit in my spirit, man. Well, it's important, man, to, you know, enjoy it all. Variety, it's the spice of life. Fucking A. All right, so let's yeah, check yeah. it out. Yeah. All right, cool.
lost it over the years. I did not. Oh, bro, that was masterful. <laughs> oh, what an experience. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Thank you for hanging in here with me, too, to make sure that I got to it. Because I worked today, man. Like, I, I had enough time to take a shower when I got home. So that's about it. And so I made sure to check the email and I got the links to the uh, P-Town Skanks and Dreadland. <coughs> but I apologize. I didn't see that. It's a lie. So I'm so glad you fucking heard that, bro. Yeah, dude. Tonight was a fantastic show. Thank you very much for playing uh, tonight's music. And uh, before we leave, you should let the people know what you and I have been working on together and what we will continue to working on together. Because mm -hmm. I you. plan on doing at least one, two, fucking 12 more songs like this with you. 12 it is. <laughs> yes, sir. I'd enjoy it too, yeah, David. Thank you, bro. It's, it's wonderful, dude. You did a fucking wonderful job. Everybody, go out there. Apple, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube. Just check it out. Truly Free, Existential, featuring Ricky Warden. It's a wonderful song. And really, it, it wouldn't even be half the song if it wasn't for Ricky. So thank you, Ricky. Okay. Everybody enjoy it. I do. I know I do, too. How it seems the chase is better than the catch. I had her in my grasp, set her free to see if she would come back to me. Lord. Come back to me Love Come back to me In the night we hear the cries With the new day love draws nigh Free Truly free Songbird sings, cherry cherry Melody playing my heart stream Love, come back to me Free, truly free Love, come back, I want you come back, love, come back to me.